when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, again, this concept, anastasis, some began to sneer. But others said, I said, we should be. <laughs> we will hear you again concerning this. It's a lot for us to digest, so keep out of it and we'll hear you again. Right? You can come back and you can elaborate. So Paul went out of their midst. So Paul's message interrupted by the Areopagus, by this council. Make no mistake, the council patiently stays with Paul throughout the whole Megillah, throughout the whole dissertation. He argues points on God, on humanity, and idols. They were right with them. They were tracking with them. However, this business about a future judgment day, a man being physically resurrected, that, sir, is beyond the pale. Far too ridiculous for an educated Athenian to accept. Because most Greeks, you know, with the exception of the Epicureans, believed in the immortality of the soul. That was a given for most. Immortality of the soul, spirit, they could buy into that. But no educated Greek, no cultured Greek, could but sneer at the idea of an immortal body. <laughs> Ridiculous. And they perceive Paul's teaching as neither a threat to Rome, not a threat to Athens. Really? All this guy's teaching is interesting too? It's, uh, it all amounts to an amusing novelty. Nobody can really take it seriously well. And Paul will later reflect in 1 Corinthians 1 that the wisdom of the world of which Athens is a tremendous example. The wisdom of the world considers the gospel to be foolishness. But to those whom God calls, the gospel is the power and the wisdom of God. But, uh, so Paul went out of their midst, but some men joined him, and believed, among whom also were Dionysus, the Areopagite, who was on the council, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So as you look at this passage, and as teachers have ruminated upon the Athenian message and Paul's uh, ministry to Athens, many characterize Paul's ministry here as a failure. But I think that Luke disagrees. He does not consider it to be a failure. On the other hand, it's clear that Luke in no way considers what happens in Athens to be a resounding success. Okay? It's not a failure. It's not a success. Luke notes that following Paul's address to the area of Vegas, some men joined him. And the word that they use indicates stuck closely to him, like glue. They really resonated with what he had to say, and they really began to follow him. So while not many Athenians come to faith during uh, Paul's time in Athens, some indeed do. And they're very serious about following what Paul says about this unknown God and knowing more about this man who is to, uh, to judge the earth. So he does make disciples there. And among the new believers, one of the 30 members of the area of Vegas, Jesus, and a woman named Galeras, and Athens, overall, you can consider it as a resounding success, success <laughs> in my book, because it's one of the very few cities that is mentioned on the first missionary journey, the second missionary journey, or we haven't even seen the third missionary journey yet, that Paul gets to leave without having been driven out under life-threatening circumstances. I'd call that a win. Yeah. I'd say that's pretty awesome. 